breaking news, latest breaking news. So they want you to believe for the most part that the economy is strong and that everything is going just fine and that, you know, this is for good reason too. We have an election coming up, right folks? Now is the time to double down on every story that could potentially be told and twisted around and manipulated to garner more views. I'm sorry, not more views, more votes. <laughs> I'm over here talking like Biden has a YouTube channel, which if he did would be epic. But it's funny because I was actually thinking about it today and it's like, it's interesting how they decided to double down on this DEI push, this diversity, equity, inclusion push with two big names in the news right now being Fannie Willis and Letitia James. But all right, folks, we got a major bombshell breaking news happening right now from the latest between Fannie Willis, Nathan Wade, and also Ashley Merchant, folks. And before we get into this, I just want to remind you guys that odds are that YouTube probably doesn't really, you know, they don't really want us to have these conversations and discussions and share this information. So if you would, please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, but most importantly, share this and drop a comment because every comment is in support of getting to the bottom of this, the truth, and most importantly, clearing the name of Donald J. Trump and potentially allowing him to become the next president of the United States of America, especially considering not only the likelihood that he will more than likely win, but how much we need him focused on this country, the betterment of this country, our economy, the livelihoods of Americans, the security of our borders, and not tied up in some courtroom battling some ridiculous allegations and some and some witch hunt of a case as they try to ruin him financially and take out personal vendettas against him while putting the entire country at risk. This is this is this is bigger than the entire race issue between, you know, Merchant and Willis and the sex scandal between Wade and Willis. But we'll get into that in just a moment. So if you would, guys, please show your support. I really would appreciate it. Thanks. Fannie Willis and Letitia James. But I'll reserve that for another video. I want to talk about the economy. And here's proof, proof that the economy is strong because Stellantis or Jeep, for that matter, is producing a limited edition last run final edition of the Jeep Wrangler. But here's the catch, folks. It's gonna cost you a hundred grand. That's six figures for a Jeep Wrangler. A Jeep Wrangler. Now, you guys, let me know. Drop a comment down below or just smash the like button or subscribe to the channel if you think that we are being sold a bill of goods here. We are being gaslighted, for lack of better words here. This is uh, literally a jar of snake oil that they're trying to sell to us. And, or maybe I'm going about it all wrong. Maybe as I see here, a Range Rover drive by, which by the way, folks, I don't know if you know this, but it's the fastest selling vehicle in the United States at over 150 grand. Well, that, that tells you point blank that you don't necessarily have to have a lot of cars, but you have to turn them quickly. And, and, you know, there's not all that many Range Rover dealers in the country, but they'll sell out of those 659, uh, Range Rovers in 17 days, 17 days. So it's, it is, it, it's like, if that's what you want, it's like you either buy it today. And if you're waiting a month, it might be a month too long to have waited. Yeah, it is absolutely wild to think that $150,000 SUV is the fastest, you know, most quickly turned over vehicle in the United States. But there you go. That's the yeah. data. Go check out the guide. We updated every single. So maybe Jeep's on to something, but it says here that, the final edition gets a half inch lift over the normal Rubicon 392. Need hood decals and bragging rights for the last V8 Wrangler. And if any of you guys remember the last char uh, Challenger, the last Dodge Challenger that rolled off or that they released or rolled out was a limited edition Dodge Challenger Hellcat 170. And the price tag on that would literally make your teeth fall out. And that was before the additional dealer markup. But get this. Each dealer in the United States got three. And you know how much of a hard time they had selling them? They didn't. People came out and they bought them. They bought them sight unseen. They bought them paid cash and paid the markup to buy them for the sole purpose of never ever driving them. So maybe the economy is stronger than we all think, right? But I got a few headlines here that I kind of want to talk to you guys about. Uh, the, the Fed's anti-inflation policy, US, oh, 
<laughs> this is a good one. U.S. politicians and their suspicious trading activity. Uh, again, election year, folks. Oh, and a CEO replaced, fired. So maybe the economy's not so great because people are still losing their jobs. The Hertz CEO replaced after his disastrous bet on Tesla and EVs, which Tesla and EVs bring up another talking point, and that is the disastrous electrical grid that can't support it. Cell phones might be down, Wi-Fi might be down, people might be completely off the grid for a little bit. Now, when you start to look at some things like this, you know, America's power grid is risk is at risk of buckling this winter. This is from a regulator. And they've been talking a lot about the power grid, saying that there's issues with this power grid and it needs to be updated. It hasn't been updated in decades. Extreme weather and climate change is making America's aging energy grid more vulnerable. Well, when you look at the chain of events that we're likely walking into, you have to ask yourself the big question. What's gonna happen next? When you look at just the last year, every week, every month, been some breaking story, some really big event, and then the next day it becomes, you know, just distant memory. Are we walking into the big one? April 8th, 2024, a solar eclipse is coming, and this will be the last one for the next 20 years. On April 8th, a total eclipse of the sun will plunge millions of viewers from daylight into darkness, making this upcoming one historically significant. The best way to prepare, fill up on gas, Food. However, this solar eclipse, they're doing some unique preparation, one of which they're closing hundreds of schools across the entire country. More schools across North Texas are planning to, well, go dark for the eclipse. They have the National Guard ready. They are telling people to stock up on at least a full tank of gas and two weeks worth of food, letting people know cell phones might be down, Wi-Fi might be down, people might be completely off the grid for a little bit. And, oh yeah, oh yeah, by the way, Donald Trump asking Elon Musk to borrow money? Met with Elon Musk about uh. filling in his donation gap. And that people who have spoken privately with Mr. Musk confirm that he has come to the decision that Biden must be defeated in November. Now, that helps me understand a little bit better why he went big today on the Biden should be uh, tried for treason for importing voters. Why doesn't it work for Democrats to say, how would that work? And Elon Musk's stance on freedom of speech and firing Don Lemon and all sorts of stuff going on with Tesla and Elon Musk, but we'll save that for another video. If you guys want that to come up next, then make sure you drop a comment. But we got Fulton County judge says that Trump can appeal his ruling on Fannie Willis. Again, why did they choose two black women to go after a white man? Why did they choose two black women? I'm sorry, not two black women to go after a white man, but why did they choose to put two black women in the news, making massive headlines in New York City and with Donald Trump and all this that's going on with a sole focus and a sole push backed by liberal, progressives, Democrats, the left, the ultra left, far left. I don't know if they ever say that, but I find it kind of odd, kind of interesting, rather convenient. Oh, and this is a good one. The FBI, FBI issues this announcement, breaking news. The Justice Department is cracking down on PPP loan fraudsters. Now, I don't consider Trump to be in that category. I don't even know if Trump got a PPP or EIDL. Odds are he probably did. It was available. He's got businesses, he's got payroll. But I couldn't help but think about some other YouTube, some other YouTuber that somebody told me about. They left a comment on one of my videos. I have to pull it up and show it to you guys. And they said that that this this person pulled out a loan and they're not paying it back or or something. They're not, let's see if I I'm gonna see if I could find it. It says, oh right here, ST has a COVID EIDL loan of 58K and repaying $300 a month. Oh, so I guess they are paying it back. He is in debt the rest of his life. To state he is not in debt is a lie. I, oh, yeah, that's that's crazy. So I don't know who ST is, but either way, somebody was telling me about somebody doing this and robbing taxpayers by stealing money from the government. I don't know who it was. But I will say, guys, be very careful, be very weary of who you decide to take advice from and who you trust with financial advisory or financial decisions or anything like that online or on the internet.
do your own due, dil due diligence, do your own homework, and make sure that you feel comfortable with any financial decision that you make prior to you know signing on that dotted line or or whatever it may be. Hey. Hey, what's up, man? Hang on one second. I didn't hear you say it again. Are you going to be around in like 15, 20 minutes, something like that? Sure. Uh, are you in a place where you can... I mean, I'm, I could make it happen. <laughs> well, so, Kevin, we got to have a little talk. First of all, let me see if I can FaceTime you. I'm on a uh, Samsung, so probably not. <laughs> no, I can't. No. So, uh, so, I'm in Panama, as you know, and the, uh, the trip here. Sorry about that. <laughs> I had a phone call come through from a buddy. Uh, he's down in Panama right now, and uh, I couldn't ignore his call. I never ignore his call, but this one was really important. And, um, yeah, a major breakthrough, life-changing event, and maybe I'll be able to fill you guys in on it a little bit later. Now, I don't really remember exactly where I left off, but I did have this pulled up on my phone and it was this work opportunity tax credit, which I really want to talk about more because the work opportunity tax credit, and this is from IRS.gov, this is, has a lot to do with what we're seeing happening right now with different laws and incentives being pushed for companies to hire people that they normally typically wouldn't hire or hire in mass. And these are folks that obviously are making major news headlines and, and making major waves as they come through and cross the border and drive and fly around the country and land and end up in different places. And essentially, I think this is one of the many pieces. It's like, and there's so many going on right now, it's kind of hard to keep up and keep track but it's literally going to be a bloodbath when it comes to income and employment and politics and DEI and everything and so on and so forth. And it's an election year. What can I say? But these are going to have major implications and, and impacts to the economy. So a lot of people constantly talk about boycotting a lot of different places, Target being one of the main ones because of uh, a lot of things they have done over the past couple of years. A lot of people don't agree with um, in, in sense of how Target wants to be extremely inclusive and not everybody agrees with the inclusivity, if you will. But the downside is that a lot of people, I feel like don't think about the fact that if we boycott all these places and these places do not have revenue coming in, these places will close down. And what happens when they close down? Yeah, of course, it you know sticks it to the man and the corporations and they don't get their money, but it also hurts the actual American people who are working in these stores, whether it's part-time, full-time, you know, inside the locations, whether it's the delivery drivers who are taking stuff to these locations, they no longer have a route, whether it is the um, companies who are manufacturing the things that are sold in these locations, they no longer have a store to sell them and so their production goes down and it's a domino trickle effect of people getting screwed now you know what else can put a company out of business huh terrible service terrible service terrible management terrible management the employees themselves they don't need to be boycott yeah they will initiate their own boycott yeah they will do their own so it's not my intention to bash restaurants but i do want to bring you guys valuable information especially when it comes to the amount of money you spend on food as it is very expensive at just in general but when you go out to eat that's even more expensive so we're here at this new restaurant that we've never tried before we we're very interested in and we brought some friends and family here with us out of town to check it out and I'm gonna show it is party foul and it's like Nashville hot chicken and things like that and you know things kind of started out you know pretty well uh, the host was kind of like all over the place and they had no clue what was going on. It took a little while to get us seated, but then eventually we did get seated outside and we were able to put our orders in, but unfortunately we all weren't able to eat at the same time. And it's because our order wasn't actually put in at all. So uh, let's just say, I don't know, 60% of us were able to eat. The other 40% of us sat there watching us eat. And the other 40% didn't really watch us eat because we were sitting outside in the dark for probably like 30 minutes. And I was like, hey, can you turn the lights on? Because it's just pitch black dark out here. So then they turned the lights on, our food finally came out. And then they hit us with the bill. Full price bill. 
never apologized, never offered any comp, no free dessert or nothing. And he's like, you know, we, we he shows up because there's anything wrong. We're like, dude, we had to wait over an hour to get two more burgers that should have came out with the rest of the food so we could have all eaten together. And you charged us full price. Like you didn't even apologize. So then he sends the manager out. The manager goes, he goes, hey, what's wrong? I'm like, well, did the server not tell you what was wrong? Oh, 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 oh I, I, I'll fix it. So then the server comes back out and says, did the manager fix it? We're like, well, did you not talk to the manager? And at that point, it was just kind of like, uh, it was real short. You know, he wasn't very friendly anymore at that point. And uh, at the end of the day, long story short is, uh, we won't be coming back here to Party Foul. And, you know, this is actually two down on the list here at Destin Commons because we went to some pizza place over here, which I forgot the name of it, but they had us waiting for like an hour and they completely forgot to put our order in. And I don't think that this is like systemic, like it's like a, like a, a continuous trend with the restaurant industry here. I think it's like somewhat of a new trend with the labor and workforce that you have in these positions. It's just, they're not all there. They're not compensated well enough to, to, to do this anyway. And their motivation level is extremely low with patrons whose expectations are relatively high, especially in consideration with how much the food costs that they're buying. Uh, and, and the portions are even smaller. So it's just not a great value. So if, if you're going to be in the service industry, please do your best. Try to make sure everybody's having a good time. Their food comes out on time. The food comes out correct. It, it, it's to their liking. And, you know, uh, because this is your livelihood. Like, we don't have to come here. You don't have to work here. But if you're going to work here and you're going to rely on your tips to make a living, you should, all, uh, you should do all you can to make sure you're making as much money as possible. Your reputation is going to be more valuable than the money you made today. And if you've got a bad reputation, then people could come to this restaurant and say, seat me anywhere except for his section. You don't want to do that. So, giving you guys a heads up. Party foul, Destin Commons. I'm not saying I don't recommend it, but just, you know, give me a heads up. So, this place here, we went to it one time. It They put a couple hundred thousand dollars into this place to turn it into, it used to be a hard rock cafe. They put in a few hundred thousand dollars to turn it into this place called party fowl it's nashville hot chicken right i don't even think it made it an entire year before it closed down because the service was absolutely awful the food was you know mediocre and the prices, and the were, prices were stupid but when you have awful service the food takes forever the food isn't really memorable and you're not going to have repeat customers and it's going to affect you and when you go online and all the reviews are service sucked food was gross food was too expensive service sucked it's going to hurt your business enough that you and I don't have to boycott those places. It's going to do it on its own based off of reviews and everything else and people not going back a second time. So that place closing, you know, obviously the people who put a ton of money into it to turn it into what it is, they're out that money. The people who work there now have to go find a new job, which really sucks because now they're going to take their non-talented butts to some other place and hurt that restaurant. But there are some who were. <clears throat> there are some who are good, obviously, to make it that long. Not everybody sucked, but the, the ones that did, they're gonna probably still try to do the same job and they're gonna go to a different location and be awful. Now this here was extremely surprising. This was um, Forever 21. Now it's gonna be Sunset Shoes and Lifestyles, which is on the flip side of here. But it's interesting that a Forever 21 closed down because that is like the <laughs> the main place besides H&M that all the tweens and teens wanna go. And so for a Forever 21 not to make it, that says a lot to me. That's direct access to China. <clears throat> you know why they didn't make it though? Nobody needs to go into Forever 21 where they can just get online and order for cheaper from Sheen and Timu. from Tim Timu or however you're supposed to say it. There will be no need for Forever 21s because the, the girls all want to go to Sephora now. Sephora is the place to go, not Forever 21, not H&M. All those things can be ordered online. And soon Sephora will go out of business because you can also order stuff like that online. But yeah, just a little bit about Party Foul and all these places. Unfortunately, good people go down with the bad. Mm -hmm. So the downside to when places like Party Foul go out of business, you know, the good people get hurt 
in, in the process too. So it's not just the bad people that lose their jobs, it's the good ones as well. It's not just that one company that gets hurt, it's all the companies that supply to them get hurt. So it is, like I said, it's a trickle effect or a domino effect, if you will. And the more places that close down, the harder it's going to be to sustain a thriving economy because that trickle, it, it's going to affect everybody's cents and dollars. Yeah, and this is gonna have a huge impact especially with real estate because as real estate agents commissions go down they they're going to pull back on the economy as well but the news headlines will tell you that the economy is great everything's good and bidenomics is great and you should vote for another a repeat another term i guess i gotta look at bidenomics i gotta look at voting for biden as like getting a code <laughs> actually i can't say that <laughs> i gotta look at voting for biden as getting a jab and realizing the side effects and all the adverse effects and asking yourself would you do it again after you were lied to about how great it would be in the beginning <laughs> lied to about lied how to great it would about be, how great in, the it be in the beginning but it's funny because we were actually watching i was watching richard fain she was listening it was a live stream and he said on the live stream he goes i don't care you know he said it's election year i don't care who wins or whatever i'll play the clip so you guys can hear it now, the 1% don't, don't want you to get rich. You know that. So they're against this White House thing that I'm going I'm to run you through here in a second. The 1% are totally against this. <laughs> they, they, don't want the, they don't want the White House to give y'all nothing. But you know it's an election year. So old Joe Biden, he got that little, he, he put it out of all the stops. It's an election year. And I'd be doggone if he going to let old Trump kick him out the White House. And again, I'm not picking sides, guys. I don't pick sides. I don't care anything about who wins. I, I, I'm just telling you, the 1%, they do not like what the, 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 the White House is trying to pull off for the 99%. And I believe... And she says, well, she says, uh, um, I think you said something like, you know... That's stupid. You should care. You should care. You win. should care. And I said... I said, yeah, but he doesn't have to because he has enough money not to care. He doesn't rely on a job. He doesn't, the economy is not going to have that much of an impact on him, especially with the, the ways that he chooses to go to market to invest. He's going to make his money no matter what. And uh, he's the tortoise versus the hare, basically. But he's got enough money to be in a position to say, I don't really care who wins. Who, whoever wins... It looks it's two categories one it's more of the same and his money is going to be more of the same or he'll make more money there's no way that he'll make less so we just happen to live in a part of florida that decided that today it wants to be cool i don't know if i say cold it was cold this morning then it was warmer now it's cooler. There's a lot of shade in some of these areas that <laughs> change the temperature. And we're about to uh, increase our elevation here. So it may look kind of may look kind of strange with hoodies on, but better safe than sorry, right? Those look good. And I've completely lost track of where this video is, but we got sidetracked uh, <laughs> and we were summoned, requested to uh, get to a sp specific location and uh we're gonna jump on a live chat or a zoom or he do, we don't have iphones and he There's doesn't have FaceTime. a samsung so he can't facetime us but he's down in panama not he's, panama city panama the country yeah panama he's in panama city in panama <laughs> not panama city beach that way he's in panama panama and he said he has some really important news he wanted to tell us about
<laughs> Listen here, you cowards. <laughs> Not a bad view for a live stream or a Zoom call or whatever this is gonna be, Never FaceTime, I don't know. But if you want the scoop, you might wanna check out Squirrel Trap 2.0 because she'll tell you all about it later.